Hey, it's your boy Mo. Listen, first and foremost, I got to just get a few things off my chest. But I want to say to everybody, I hope everybody out there is doing their best to really protect themselves, social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, and, um, you know, please do the best to help somebody else out. But I, I, I got to speak up. I got to say a few things. I got to get a few things off my chest. I haven't been on YouTube in a minute, and um, some shit has really been bothering me about what's going on in this country. I mean, we have a young man being shot seven times in the back. We have a young lady being shot and killed in her own house. We have a man being knelt on for eight over eight minutes, almost nine minutes, and lost his life in front of America. And we have politicians that are sitting back and they're telling you that it it's, it's okay, basically, because they haven't stepped up to make changes. And I'm saying we have leadership in this country that when you take over as the guardian, as the caretaker of America, you are that person that's supposed to try to bring this country together in times of struggle. You're the person that's supposed to put the country back together when it's falling apart. And the only thing I see that's happening is we have a president that just is not understanding to anybody else's needs other than his own. He cares about his family. He cares about his friends. He cares about if, you know, other people that are in his tax bracket. But he's not really out front and for the common guy that he said that was his concern. Let's make America great. Let's bring back jobs. Let's bring back the uh, middle class. Let's bring people up that were down. That's not this guy. We're, we're supposed to be cleaning out the swamp, right? But guess what? He's the biggest fish in the swamp. So when you sit back and you dismiss questions about Jacob Taylor today at your conference, but then again you say you're going to um, talk about a racial unjust or racial um, division in your speech tonight, when you accept the nominee, I mean, that's kind of complete bullshit. And if you can't see what's going on in somebody else's life, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. Because when you look and you see what's going on, you're not looking, you're just admiring, you're just viewing what you see going on in someone else's life. When you see what's going on in other people's lives. That means you have to take a deeper sense of what you see and realize that the same things that they're going through, the same trials, tribulations, are the same trials and tribulations that go on in your own life. They're just at a different place. They're maybe not at the same economic level that you're at. They may not be in the same um socially advantaged areas that you live in, but guess what? They're human beings and they are going through the same struggles. They're human beings and they need to be seen that way. Because if you look at me, yeah, you see a black man. That's what you see. But if you take time to see me, maybe you'll see that I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a worker, I'm a guy that is concerned about what's going on in his community. I'm a guy that's concerned about what's going on with his family and his friends. I'm a guy that will put my neck on the line to help somebody else out. When somebody's in a time of need, I will go out there and do what I can do for that person. But if you just look at me, hey, guess what? That's just a black man. Maybe he's suspicious. Maybe he has an ulterior motive. Maybe he's going to commit a crime. Maybe he has marijuana. Maybe he has drugs. Maybe he has a weapon on him. Maybe he's a threat. That's because you are not seeing. You're just looking at me. And unfortunately, looking has happened for too long. We have police officers, and don't get me wrong, there are police officers that are good, but we have police officers that are on the force that are no good and that need to be weeded out and taken off the force. And we have police officers that do not step up 
and say something or do something when they see that bad cop being bad, breaking laws, just violating somebody's civil rights. At some point in time, we cannot hold them or, or let them stand on a platform that gives them the right to be disruptive, dismissive, violent uh, killers. And that's the only way to say it, because what's going on in this country, this, this is not a mistake. You know, I heard Herschel Walker, who I have always admired, always admired Herschel Walker, but to listen to him talk about this young man that was shot seven times and say, oh, I don't look at it as it was a racial motivated incident. It was just an incident and he happened to be black. When there's a 17 year old kid that went out and murdered someone, but yet police didn't take out their guns and shoot him. They offered him water. Offer them water. Vigilantes that go out and are disruptive. The police offer them water and thanks. But if someone that looks like me were to do it, I would be full of lead. And it would be because they thought I posed a threat. Not hey, he's trying to help out, but no, he poses a threat. So if you're listening, and if you have an ounce of change, an ounce of change that needs to happen, then you need to do something. The best way to do it, listen, I'm not asking you to be violent. I'm not asking you to act up against any race. But what I'm asking you to do is get your ass up, become active, go into your communities and ask people to register to vote. The only way that we as a people, as a nation, can come together and make change take place is if we participate in the process of electing people that can make change happen. But if we don't, and we sit back and allow another four years to go by with the same divisive human being that sits in the office and is dismissive to your struggles, to your needs, to your wants, to your desires, to your kids' dreams, and to your kids' futures, then get up, do something about it. And guess what? I'm not just saying that people that look like me need to get up and do something about it. But guess what? There are a lot of whites in this country that are living in the same conditions that brown, yellow people are living. And guess what? You didn't get a break because Donald Trump became president. Your life didn't become life altering and all of a sudden you moved into the suburbs. Got a great job. No, your conditions are the same because you didn't get anything because you're not in this tax bracket. You're not his friend. You're not his neighbor. And you will not be his neighbor. Now, I, <laughs> I've had the fortune or unfortunate of having dinner with this man at a golf outing. And this is before he was the president. And you know what? Same guy. Nothing changes. He thought about himself shook my hand and then asked his assistant to sanitize his hand, okay? So I'm not somebody that hasn't seen anything 
or hasn't been around anybody. I've been around a lot of people. I've seen a lot of things. And what I'm hoping that you will wake up and open your eyes and like I said before, I want you to see things. I don't want you to look because when we look, we admire, we gaze, we glance. We do not take a deeper visual involvement. I want you to see what is going on around you. What's going on in your neighborhoods? What's going on in your family? What's going on with your politics in your town? What's going on with your kids and their dreams and their admirations? No kid wants to see their parents struggle. No kid wants to see their dad or mom sit at home and not go to work to earn a check. We got more than 40 million people out of work. And guess what? This president, he cut that stimulus package, that bonus that people were getting, that $600 a week that allowed people to pay bills, pay their rent, provide food and shelter for their kids. They didn't get millions of dollars. They got something to allow them to have some dignity. When you put into this system, and you may have worked your entire life and never got an unemployment check, and when you put into this system and you try to get out and you find that there's nobody fighting for you. And then when you do get something, the first thing this president says is, you know what? I think people are being lazy and I think that we're giving them a reason not to work. Well, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. So if you can sit back and if you don't take anything from what I'm saying, just take one thing. Look in the mirror and tell me what you see. I want you to tell me what you see. Because what I see, I see a broken country. I see a divided country. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big golf fan. And, uh, you know, there's a young man, he's biracial. If you look at him at first glance, he doesn't look biracially, he looks white by all eyes to see. And like I said, when you look, but when you see this young man, Cameron Champ, his grandfather was black, his grandfather was in the military, his grandfather taught him how to play this game. But his grandfather also educated him and let him know that in his life, there were struggles, there were injustices, there were things that he was not allowed to do, even though he joined that military that fights for freedoms and liberties for other people. But he has not always been given those same liberties. But what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I look at the news today and, you know, they focus on Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. You know, he didn't say anything about huh, Jacob Blake. Not at all. You know what? Uh, Cameron Champ did. Cameron Champ had Breonna Taylor on his shoe. Jacob Blake on his other shoe. He's a young man that had the balls to sit back and openly talk about what's going on and the injustices that have taken place in this country that people refuse to accept, that people refuse to see and want there to be change. The only time somebody wants something to change is when they are affected by it personally. Now, if you haven't been affected by it, then you don't understand the necessity for change. And if you have suffered and gone through it 
then you understand why change needs to come now. Why it's important to get up, talk, encourage people that haven't voted to vote, encourage people to register to vote. I, I, listen, I'm tired of hollering. I want everybody to get up off your ass and do something. See, because when you do something, it's better than nothing. And when I sat back and I listened to Tiger Woods, no comment, because he wants to be politically correct. Because in his eyes, he's not really black and he doesn't really suffer the same injustices that other blacks deal with. He's above it. And then Herschel Walker. Listen, you might be Donald Trump's friend, but at the same time, you're a man that has seen and does see that there are injustices going on out there. And if Donald Trump is your friend, then why haven't you spoken to him and say, hey, you know, why didn't you acknowledge Breonna Taylor? Why didn't you acknowledge uh, Jacob Blake? Why didn't you acknowledge uh, George Floyd's family when you talked to his brother but didn't give him a chance to speak back and hung up on him in 20 seconds? That's your friend? I don't want to call you complicit. Herschel, but you're looking and you're not seeing the problem, man. All these athletes that have decided to do something, I applaud you. I take my hat off to you. And guess what? They're not all black athletes. They're white athletes that are standing in solidarity with the black athletes that are there the yellow athletes that are there. You know, I lost my dad a year ago, and one thing my dad always taught me, that if I cut you, you bleed red. So when we all think about color and race, you know, if I cut you, you bleed red. You're a human being. And when I see you and you see me, I would hope, I would hope that you would see me and treat me as a man first. Not as a black man, but as a man first. The way I would treat you. I want everybody to stay strong. And I, mean, I know we're losing a lot of good people to this virus. And I, I want you to... You know, cherish the moments you have with those that are elderly and that may not be in the best health. Cherish the moments. Spend as much time as you can. And talk to them because they are the ones that have paved the road for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have today. They went through the Jim Crow Laws. They went through separate and not equal. They went through, if I want to buy something to eat, I got to go to the back door. They went through, I can't come to this school because it's whites only. I can't drink from this fountain because it's whites only. I can't eat at this counter because it's whites only. I can't use that bathroom because it's whites only. I can't go to that police station because it's whites only that they protect. So if you really care about anything, if you really care about what's going on in this country and you really want to make a change, I'm asking you, make a change. Don't talk about a change. Be about a change. This man is divisive. And the people that he surrounds himself with are as divisive as he is. Because none of them want to acknowledge or accept that there's something wrong. That there's injustices that are taking place on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not being acknowledged. And there is no solution that he has provided us with that can get us to the next level. Man, I, I love everybody that's out there.
you know, if you like what I say, hey, you can hit my subscribe button and you can keep informed. Because guess what? I'm coming back at you like I've never come before. I'm pissed off at what's going on in this country. And I'm going to make a statement. And I'm going to try and make a statement so that, you know what? I'm going to force you to hear me. But better yet, I'm going to force you to see me. So you see me. Look at this face. Look at my views. Think of me the way you think of your family, your friends, your kids, your wife. Some people treat their dogs better than they treat human beings. And they can accept the dog, whether he's yellow, black, red, doesn't make a difference what color he is, what, what he looks like, what his limitations are, what his handicaps are. People can accept an animal, but yet you can't accept me because of the color of my skin. That's sad. And something's got to change. And guess what? It's time for us, collectively, to come together and make a change. We need to remove the cancer from the body so that the body can recover and make a full recovery. I love you guys, man. You can either like me, hate me, it doesn't really make a difference as long as you hear me and know that I'm sincere. Because I don't care what color you are. I think everybody's life matters. I think every life matters. But it's disparaging to see that these young black lives haven't mattered. And that's what the whole issue, that's what the point is. Black lives matter. Yes, every life matters, but they matter too. They matter too. Because that life is not just, hey, he made a mistake in life, or hey, he went to jail. Oh, guess what? He's a human being. If he paid his debt to society, then that's over with. He's got a chance to start over. I'm not done. I'm going to continue to talk about this until you see what I see. When you look at me, you can see me as your equal. When you meet me, you can meet me as your equal. And our friendship can start at a place where we look at each other and identify each other as just human beings and not hate each other because we go to different churches or we come from different sides of the town or because we don't share the same pigmentation. I love you guys, man. Peace. Until the next time, be strong, stay bold, and get out there and make a change. Vote. If you know somebody that hasn't registered, tell them to vote. Tell them to get out there and do something instead of waiting for somebody else to get up off their ass and make a move. Peace.